I don't know what you're going through right now, but God knows. Here's the first one. If you need to, right now your body is in pain right now, maybe a sickness. Can you just put your hand on your body? Just put your hand. You're going to lay hands on yourself right now. You're in pain. You have a headache. You got migraines. You're sick right now. Maybe a bad report from the doctor. I don't know. Just put your hand on your body and say, Jesus, heal me tonight. Heal me tonight, God. I receive my healing. There it goes. There it goes. Some of you guys are getting healed right now. Yes, yes. Holy Spirit, move right now. Somebody hurting, maybe depressed right now. Can you slip your hand up? Let's, let, let's just let the Holy Spirit move for a couple of minutes right now. I'm not, in, I'm not, we're not in a rush tonight. Let's just let God, it's okay for let the Holy Spirit just move a little bit right now. We're going to get into a word. God has a word for us tonight. Can you slip your hand up if you've been dealing with depression for a second? Can you slip your hand up? Enemy's been attacking you. You've been depressed. Can't sleep. Can't drink. Maybe you can't eat. Yes, look at all those hands. Look at all those hands. Yes, yes. You're at home right now. You're watching online. Join us. I see all these hands right now. We come against the spirit of this right now of depression right now in the name of Jesus. Depression, we command you to go right now. Depression, we command you to go. Spirit of suicide, we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you see all these hands that are raised right now. They've been attacked with, with depression. We bind that in Jesus' name. We bind that in Jesus' name. Come on, church, give the Lord a big shout of praise. The Holy Spirit is moving right now. He's touching us. Father, we thank you. I don't know what the need is, Lord. I don't know what the warfare they're going through, God. You know the warfare they're facing, Lord. Father, I thank you. Those watching online, maybe in the hospital, we have a few of our members right now. One of our members is in the hospital right now. And we, we, we bind sickness right now in the name of Jesus. We bind COVID. We bind that Delta virus right now in the name of Jesus. We command that virus to leave. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Leave right now. Sickness, we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. We're on holy grounds right now. I don't want to rush this small. Just let the Lord touch you for a second. The Lord gave me a message on warfare. A lot of us in this room, I would say the majority, you're going through some serious warfare right now. Slip your hand up if you're going through some serious, intense warfare right now. Look at all those hands. Look at all those hands. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are more than conquerors to you, Jesus, who strengthens us. We will overcome, not with us, not with our power, not with our abilities, through the power of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. There's the Holy Spirit. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Some of you guys are crying right now. Why am I crying? The Holy Spirit is just touching you right now. He's cleansing you. He's purifying you. He's strengthening you. There it goes, there it goes. Father, bless our missions team. They're going to Africa in a few days, God. Use them mightily in Kenya, Uganda. We thank you. Use our missionary team as they get ready to go to Africa. Traveling mercies. Plead the blood of Jesus over our team right now that's going to Africa. We thank you. Miracle signs and wonders will follow our team as they go out. Salvations like we've never seen it before in Africa. There it goes. There it goes. We thank you, Father Lord. Have your way tonight. In Jesus' name. Can you give God a big shout of praise tonight? Give your neighbor a high five. You're in a good place today. Look at the person behind you. Tell them you're in a good place tonight. You made a right decision to be in the house of God tonight. Worship. Give it up for the worship team doing a phenomenal job of worship. Great job in worship. You guys get your phones out, get your tablets out, get your minds out, however you take notes. 
And I say mind, you can only get so much. You got to get a notepad. You got you to get a phone. You got to get a tablet. It's impossible to hear this message and retain all of it. That's impossible. Um, you got you to gotta hear it over and over. You got to write it down. Like Pastor Marco said, we're giving out notepads for first-time guests. And get a notepad and write some things down. This word tonight, for really quick, for the ones that I haven't met, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor, um, and I'm just so excited to be part of this church. We have some of the greatest leaders in the world. Give it up for Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa. Give it up for the leadership. Give it up for the pastors. Pastor Chris Morgan, you guys are tearing it up in Pomona. Man, you guys are snatching souls in Pomona. Snatching souls every week. Our Pomona church is increasing with people right now. Every week. Give it up for Tijuana church. Some of our leaders are right here. Tijuana. Doing a great job at Uganda and all the other cities we're in right now. But as I sought the Lord last night, I didn't know John. Had no clue. I called Pastor Joe. I said, Pastor Joe, are you hearing anything from the Lord right now? Maybe you need to minister tonight. Are you hearing anything from God? And he told me a few days ago or whatever, a, a while back, he said, the Lord is, is, is giving me revelation on spiritual warfare. Soon as he said spiritual warfare, something bubbled in my, in, 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 in my stomach. Soon as he said the word warfare, I said, Pastor Joe, there goes the word right there. We're going to be talking about spiritual warfare tonight. Here's the title. Write this down. How to fight. And win in spiritual warfare. How to fight and win in spiritual warfare. By a show of hands, how many are warfare right now? There's a way to fight and there's a way to win in spiritual warfare. First scripture, Psalms 144, verse 1. If you have your Bibles turned there, your, your notepads turned there. And I, I encourage you guys, if you don't have a physical Bible, get a physical Bible. Anybody in here tonight with a physical Bible? Show me your Bible. Anybody got a Bible? Give it up for the soldiers. All right, how many got their phones? You, you, how many got their phones? Are you looking at it? You're not texting, are you? If your neighbor is texting, tell them, quit texting. Pay attention. I, I, I spoke to the youth a few weeks ago, and I'll share it with you. I was in the youth room the other day, and only one kid had a physical Bible in there. That's okay. They were on their phones. They were looking up scriptures. Some of them were texting. I started walking up and down the aisles in our youth room. I said, hey, get off your phone. We're getting ready for the word of God. Man, the youth, some of them got scared. What's this guy doing in here? And when I was there looking at the teenagers with all their phones, I told the teenager, I'm going to tell you this. Be careful that the word of God, the Bible, just becomes another app on your telephone. It's just an app. We click it in the morning. And they got auto. What is it? Auto play or auto? What, do you, what is it? Audio. That's cool. I like that. But nothing beats the physical word of God. So I encourage you guys, get a Bible and read it. And, and phones are great. I love phones. I love technology. Psalms 144 verse 1. You guys got it? Let me see who's got it. You guys got it? Positive peer pressure. Look at someone on their phone. They got it? They're not texting their friends or girlfriends. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Worship team sang Jehovah Jireh. Praise Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. Praise the Lord, who is my rock. Who is your rock tonight? If your rock is not the Lord, spiritual warfare, the enemy's going to eat you alive. The Lord has to become our rock, our refuge, our everything. He trains my hands for war. What does the Lord do? What does the Lord do? And gives my fingers skill for battle. Right now, the Lord is trying to skill. 
skill you in warfare. Here's a side note. Things are not going to get easier. You're going to have to get stronger with God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, things are not going to get easier. You're going to have to get harder and stronger. Right now, I'm training my son to play baseball a little bit. He's in seventh grade. You know, he thinks he's pretty good. He is pretty good. He don't have a clue what high school's all about. I was the star in Little League. Man, I used to hit home runs left and right. I think my father's in right here. Father, good to have you in church today. Look at my dad. Good to see you, dad, in church today. Love my father so much. <laughs> I was great, man, hitting home runs all over the place. I thought I was the fastest kid on the block. Everybody told me I'm fast. And I was fast until I got to ninth grade high school. I was still pretty fast. I said, oh, my gosh, there's kids way faster than me. Then I was skinny like this. We got on the weight bench, and I was one of the worst. I was, my legs were chicken legs. And a coach told me, son, you're in high school now. Those legs are not going to cut it. <laughs> because power comes from your legs. Your legs are not going to be able to, you can't, you can't, you can't get power with chicken legs. I had a strong upper body, but my legs were chicken legs. And I said, this coach don't know what he's talking about. Man, I was a star in the league. And sure enough, those home runs I hit in little league, there were pop outs in high school. I couldn't generate the power. Warfare, intense warfare, the battle against the enemy, the things we're about to face in this country, the things you're about to face in your job, the things you're about to face in your family, they're not going to get easier. We need to get stronger with God. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's time to beef up. It's time to beef up. Let me define spiritual warfare. Write this down. Definition of spiritual warfare. A spiritual war between the enemy and God's followers. It's a spiritual war between the enemy and God's followers. Look at Ephesians 6 verse 12. I'll give you a moment to get there. If you're on your phones, get there. Let me see the Bibles are returning. Okay, okay. I think we go too fast sometimes. We're, we're not turning to the scripture. We're going to Ephesians 6, 12. Pomona Church right now, they, they, they're making everybody get a Bible in Pomona Church right now. Everybody get their Bible turned to it. I said, Pastor Chris, you ain't messing around. I have to do that at Hallmark. Get our Bibles. You guys got it? Ephesians 6, 12? Got it? For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies. I'm reading now the TLB version. The evil rulers of the unseen world. Those mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world. And against huge numbers of wicked spirits in the spirit world. The first thing to know about warfare, the fight, the war, is not against people. Wives, your battle is not with your husband. You're trying to get your husbands to do this and do that. Your husbands are not even listening half the time. Can I get an amen, women? That was your... Let me try that again. Your husbands are not even listening half the time. <laughs> what? A wife asks me all the time, what did I say? Blur, 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 blur. Your fight is not against your spouse. It's not against your boss. It's not against... It's not against your kids. It's not against your brother. It's not against your sister. It's not against your neighbor. It's not against your dog. It's not against. It's not a people, a physical thing. This is a spiritual fight that we're in. It's a spiritual fight against the enemy. And against the satanic kingdoms that, that the enemy tries to establish or not tries to establish that he is establishing. He's establishing Satan kingdoms in the schools. He's establishing Satan kingdoms, Satanic kingdoms in our neighborhoods. 
But we're here to let notice right now. It doesn't matter what the enemy tries to do. We serve a God who's above everything. Can I get an amen? But we have to fight. It's a fight against the enemy. It's a fight against the satanic kingdom. I don't know about you, my house and family, and we're under warfare right now. Anybody under warfare right now? It's very important to know who you're fighting against. If you don't know who you're fighting against, you can't strategize. So the first thing about warfare, according to Ephesians 6, 12, our warfare is not against people. It's against who? Who's the fight against? Who's the fight against? It's the enemy. Who's the enemy? The devil, Lucifer. And all the demons that got kicked out of heaven. That's who we're fighting. It's a, it's a spirit that we can't see. But we can fight this spirit because the Holy Spirit, he knows how to fight. Jesus knows how to fight. Can I give you good news? Jesus is undefeated. He's never lost a battle yet. Can we give Jesus a round of applause? He's the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Jesus has never lost a battle, yet he will never lose a battle. What's the purpose of spiritual warfare? Write this down. What's the purpose of spiritual warfare? Let's look at God's purpose first. God's purpose, they have it on the screen. I want to make sure they have it. Take pictures if you have to. Here's God's purpose for spiritual warfare. To make way for advancement. What God is trying to do, what he's doing in spiritual warfare, he's trying to advance you. He's trying to advance your thinking. He's trying to advance your wisdom. He's trying to advance your love. He's trying to advance your relationships. So God's purpose when he allows spiritual warfare is to advance us. It's to graduate us to the next level. We cannot graduate to the next level until we pass the test. Can I get an amen? How many ever failed a test in school? How many, how many like me, you had to go to summer school a few times in summer? Right? You can't move on to the next grade unless you pass the test. God's purpose for spiritual warfare is to build our faith. It's to build our endurance. To prepare or, or equip us for what's next. I love that. Please write that down. To prepare or equip us for what's next. What? The next fight you're going to be in. The next battle you're going to face. One of the things the church right now in the last days, well, it's going to be coming up so soon, it's already here, but it's going to intensify. It's going to be the persecution against the church. It's going to come like a flood, like we've never seen it before. So the fight that you're in right now, the spiritual warfare you're in right now, is to prepare us to handle the next fight. To be able to handle what's next. God's purpose for spiritual warfare is for us to overcome so we can teach others to overcome. We overcome, and now we can teach others to overcome. God's purpose for spiritual warfare is to humble us. How I many know sometimes we got to be humbled sometimes? I don't like it. I hate it, but we need it. Man, warfare will humble a person. Going through something you've never been. You lose a business, man, it'll humble you at times. Because, man, there's different seasons in life. There's seasons of wealth and there's seasons where things are going smooth. But I'm telling you right now, we are in a season of warfare. God's purpose for warfare, to teach us to rely on God for everything. Teach us to rely on God for everything. The Bible says in the last days, the just shall live by faith. We need to make it a point in our minds to say, God, without you, I can't do nothing. I need you tomorrow. I need you Friday. I need you Saturday. I need you at one o'clock in the morning. I need you, Jesus. 
I need you in this fight. I can't do this on my own. And on Wednesday, we're going to be, next Wednesday, we're going to, give, we're going to have a P12 takeover. We can't fight this alone. We need our brothers. We need our sisters. We need people to join up arms and to fight together. Here's the enemy's purpose for warfare. To stop your advancement. Stop you from going forward. Stop you from getting to discipleship class. Stop you from joining the P12. Enemy's purpose for spiritual warfare. To drive us away from our purpose and destiny. It's to weaken us. That's the enemy's plan. It's to steal our faith. To get us to quit and to give up. Enemy's plan for spiritual warfare to break us. To steal our joy. To take our focus off of God. To shift our trust from God to something else. That's the enemy's purpose. But we're letting the enemy right now, we're, we're letting him know right now he's already been defeated. He was defeated 2021 years ago on the cross called Calvary. The enemy is defeated. But it's our responsibility to keep the enemy underneath our feet. Let's be honest. Some of us, we're not even going through maybe so much warfare. We're just going through consequences of bad choices. Look at your neighbor. He's talking to you now. He's talking to you now. <laughs> Pastor, I'm going through warfare. I got this crazy boyfriend. That ain't warfare. You just choose. You just, you just chose. I don't even want to say. You chose. <laughs> right? The point of that is, and I'm guilty like everybody in this room, don't add to the warfare. Life is already hard as it is. Lord, help me to make good choices. Can you tell the Lord that? Say, Lord, help me to make good choices. Let's not add to the warfare. I've done that several times. Now, Three things you could do to fight in the spiritual battle. Write these down. We're going to look at Je Jehoshaphat. Go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Go to, chapter, go to chapter 20 for the sake of time. Write this down. Three things you can do to fight and win in spiritual warfare. 2 Chronicles 21 and 2. Let's look at the... Kind of like the story of what happened to Jehoshaphat and the warfare he was under. Jehoshaphat, again, was a king of Judah. Um, he was the fourth king. He was a godly man. Um, but look at the warfare that he's under. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. After this, the armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Meunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Can I tell you something? The enemy has declared war upon you and your family. The enemy has declared war over your children. But I'm letting the enemy know he can't have my kids. He can't have my marriage. He can't have my relationship. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Tell your neighbor, you can't touch this. MC, had it right. MC Hammer had it right back in 1995 or 3, whatever it was. The enemy has declared war. He's declared war upon Kenya and Uganda. Last time I went to Uganda, what is it, three, four o'clock in the morning or so, five o'clock, I don't know what it is. I heard somebody shouting outside when I was there, my first morning there, and I was tired. That's a long trip. <laughs> Loud. I said, man, it's almost speaking in tongues. This is good. I said, what in the world is that? Open up the windows and I can hear it for miles. I said, what is that? And I'm hearing it more. And somebody had told me, it might have been um, Pastor, um, Pastor there in Uganda, I forgot his name. Yeah, Bernard. He told me that's the Muslims praying. 
So I don't know if it's five o'clock in the morning or four. I forgot what time it was. And blah, 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 blah. And I said, that's war. They're coming against Jesus right now with that prayer. They don't believe in Jesus as the Messiah. That's a demonic religion. And they did that for about an hour or so. And I said, I bind every prayer and what these guys and people are saying. I told Pastor Bonar, I said, get your speakers. You start praying at five o'clock in the morning. You can shout all you want. You do it in Africa, get ready to die. <laughs> Pastor Bernard said, Robert, slow your roll. We could do that. We could die. They could, they could blow up our church tomorrow. That's how serious it is, the warfare. That's why we went to Uganda. They're buying all the properties in that Bavuma Island where we started the school. The Muslims are buying all the property. God told Pastor Bernard, Get there and beat them by start a school first. Beat them there. That's why we're in Bovuma Island. That's how we got to Uganda. And praise be to God, we set up a school in Uganda, in Bovuma Island, setting up a church, saving souls. The enemy has declared war. But I'm telling the enemy, he is defeated. You come against me with sword and javelin. I come against you in the name of the Lord Most High God. You shall be defeated. I come to you with the armies of the living God. Man, I feel the weight of this sermon. You guys feel the weight of this? I feel the weight of this right now. Whew. Enemy has declared war on our children. He's declared war in our schools. Father, we thank you right now. He will not have our kids. He will not have our grandkids. It's the weight of the Holy Ghost. This is the glory. This is the glory. This is the glory. This is how the glory feels. Father, I feel the weight of this. Enemies declared war. Help us to be alert. Help me, God, to be alert. Help me and my wife to be alert. Help my family to be alert. Start to pray. Don't, don't, don't look at me. Pray, pray. This is a heavy moment right now. Pray. Pray for your kids. Some of your kids right now, the enemy has a grip on them. I just seen it like a big claw on a child right now. I just seen it. I just see like a big claw on a little kid, little girl. Enemy has a grip on some of our children right now. Praying the Holy Spirit. You're not praying the Holy Spirit, praying the Holy Spirit. This is not a normal service right now. Praying the Holy Ghost. You know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, praying the Holy Ghost. We command that hand to let loose of that child in the name of Jesus. To let loose of that teenager, to let loose of that young adult. We, they, the enemy declaring war. We're declaring war. We're declaring that Jesus has our families. We're declaring that Jesus has our children. Let loose in the name of Jesus. Let loose in the name of Jesus. Everything we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Everything we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We bind it and we loose it right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, give Jesus a shout of praise. Tell your neighbor, this is good. I'm happy you made it tonight. The person that missed it, shame on them. Hope they listen to it later. The army's now surrounded Jehoshaphat. They declared war. Three steps. Write this down. Number one. Three things you can do to fight and win in spiritual battle, in spiritual warfare. Number one. Go to God in prayer and ask for help. You're in warfare right now. Go to God in prayer 
and ask him for help, he'll help you. How many do we, we serve a God that helps us? He's interested in our, of what we're going through. He knows what we're going through. He hears that cry from my mama. He sees those tears at times. He sees that frustration maybe you're carrying that, and that weight. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3, look what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. Lord, we beg you for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. Right before I got up here, Deborah came up to me. Right before I got up, she came up to me. She goes, Robert, Holy Spirit's telling me right now, we're about to enter some crazy warfare, and we need to pray and fast like we've never prayed and fast. I said, sweetie, that's my first point tonight. I'm speaking on war for the whole, God is speaking on warfare. If we're going to get through this warfare, get through this fight, we need to pray and ask God for help. Pray like we've never prayed before. If you've never fasted, this is a season to start fasting. I'm the first one. I haven't fasted in a while. Lord, forgive me. I need to pray a whole lot more. How many need to pray a whole lot more right now? Some of us are worried about this and worried about that. And God is saying, just pray, release it to me. So people from all the towns of Judah came to us to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah in Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you, O Lord, are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. Every principality that's attacking us. Lord, you are above every principality of the evil one. You are above every principality of the satanic realm. You are above, Lord. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. That was Jehoshaphat's prayer. What does prayer do in the warfare? Write this down. Prayer allows God to intervene. He allows it. He's like, son, watch out, daughter, watch out. I got this. Let me handle this. Prayer is a filling station. Prayer is a filling station. It's where the Holy Spirit fills us with strength and peace, guidance, wisdom. Prayer is a release of all the anxieties of the warfare you're facing. Prayer could bring you peace in the middle of the craziest war because prayer releases all the anxiety and cares. That's what prayer does. Prayer allows God to speak to you and give you divine wisdom for the war. I think I said it weeks back when I spoke on wisdom. We don't need so much of a miracle. We need wisdom how to get out of that problem. We need wisdom from the Lord. We need guidance. God, what do I do right now? Where where, where do I go for my next job? Lord, who, who do I talk to? What do I do, God? Prayer also builds faith to keep on fighting. Prayer gives that tenacity to not to quit. How many's ever been in here? You, you, you've had temptations to quit on things in life. Quit on school and quit on relationships. And prayer, man, it, it releases a supernatural strength to keep on fighting when things get tough. So one of the things we do in spiritual warfare, we, we, we spend time in prayer. And like Deborah, like you said, honey, we need a lot more fasting right now. We're getting ready to experience some war for some of us we've never faced before. Fasting, what does that do? That denies your flesh and saying, God, I don't want to eat today. I'll skip lunch. I'll skip dinner. Lord, I want you to move on my behalf. Number two, remind yourself the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Who does the battle belong to? In the middle of warfare, in the middle of a battle, you need to remind yourself, it's not your battle, it's the Lord's. 2 Chronicles 20, 15. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. I'm letting you know, don't be discouraged on this fight that you're facing right now. Don't be discouraged 
on some attack the enemy has on you right now. Don't be discouraged about your job right now. Don't be discouraged. Why? For the battle is not yours, but God's. If you read this chapter, I encourage you to read this chapter. Who's speaking here? Is, it, it, let, let's see what verses. I'll just, I'll just read it. Let me see. Let me read that for you. Second Chronicles 15. Yeah, 15. All the men of Judah stood before the Lord. They began to pray. The Spirit of the Lord, this is verse 14, 2 Chronicles 20, 14. The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel. Jehaziel. I don't know how to say it. The son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, son of Jael, son of Metaniah, Levi, who was the son of Asa. So as they were in their prayer, they were praying, they were fasting, the Spirit of the Lord came upon this guy, and he started to share this. When you're in the, let me just add that this is a golden nugget. When you are praying and you're seeking the Lord, he's going to release a prophetic word. He's going to release a word that you need in that season and in that fight. But if we don't get to the prayer closet, we don't spend time with God, you'll miss that prophetic word that the Spirit of God wants to give you. You guys got that? So number two, remind yourself, it's not the Lord's battle. It's not my battle. It's the Lord's. When we surrender the fight to God, we can find rest. In the heart of a battle against an enemy much stronger than us, man, we could be confident. Not confident in Robert, confident in the Lord's. We could be confident. We could get rest once we give this fight over to the Lord. Here's number three, and we're done. How do we get through the warfare? How do we, how do we fight and win? Number three, praise God for the victory before the victory. Praise God for the victory before the victory. Now, this is hard. How am I going to praise God when I, it seems like everything is getting worse? I could say, we, we say that number three and we're shouting and screaming. It's tough. My heart was broken today. I went to go take my son to go hit some balls. Some guys training him right now and I was so broken. I was talking to the coach and he says, hey, come on, let me tell you something, man. I said, what's up? Can you see that girl over there? I said, yeah. He's that's my daughter's friend. Her dad just died of COVID. His wife is torn. We had the daughter here just trying to, just trying to get her mind at ease for an hour. And I, I said, you got to bring her to church. He said, Rob, I did. I brought her Sunday. She was here at nine o'clock. I said, I told John, John, good job. You got it. Get, get, get mama. You got to get mama to the house. You got to get her here. I said, there any more kids? Yeah, they got a son. Get them to the house. You got to get them here. When I hear in these stories, and I, I was so broken. I went home and my wife tells me, I said, Rob, you take it too personal. And I do. I probably wouldn't sleep tonight barely. It's just, it wrecks me. I just looking at her, just catching ground balls. I said, how is she even here? I don't know what you're facing. See, but when you spend time with God and pray, he's going to give you that power to lift up your hands when you don't want to lift up your hands. He'll give you a praise when you don't want to praise. He'll give you a shout when you don't want to shout. He'll give you a worship. He'll give you a song. Praise God for the victory before the victory. Second Chronicles 20, 21. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army. Now again, they're being attacked by three countries. And look what the Lord tells them. I'm going to fight for you. I got the battle. Just get a bunch of singers, put them in the front, start worshiping me. King Jehoshaphat, I'm sure I... The, the, the description of the Bible says, if, if it wrote down everything, we couldn't even write that. I, I'm sure for a split second, you'll say, what? Sing? There's three, oh, we're surrounded, we're about to get annihilated. God says, no, you're not, it's my battle. I just want you to sing. 
So they put the singers, they put the worship team out in the front. They start singing. Second Chronicles 20, 22. Now look what happens when we worship in the middle of warfare. Look what happens when we praise God for the victory before the victory. Second Chronicles 20, 22. Again, we don't have time to go through this whole chapter. Read this chapter, study it later. It's a great chapter and chapters. At the very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the army of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting within each other. <laughs> what happened? As soon as they began to worship, as soon as we begin to worship and give God praise before we see anything, as soon as we lift our hands, as soon as we worship, the Lord starts to move. I love that. At that very moment, they began to sing and sing praises. The Lord caused them to fight and kill each other. See, praise disarms the enemy's weapons. Praise destroys the enemy's strategies. Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, they had strategies to kill and annihilate the people of God. God says, not today, no way, no, I'm right here, I'm fighting this battle, no, not, not on my watch. Praise will cause victory. One of the greatest weapons we have in the middle of a warfare is start to worship and shout and scream. Praise God for who he is. We're not praising our problem. We're not talking about our issues. Let's praise God for who he is and who is he? He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's never lost a battle yet. He is for us. He is not against us. He knows what we're going through. Somebody worship God. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Start to worship God for 30 seconds. I double dog dare you. Praise God for the victory before the victory. Can you praise God for the victory before the victory? Praise God for the victory before the victory. Praise God for the victory before the victory. This is how I fight my battles. You guys, can you guys sing that? This is how I fight my battles. How I fight my battles is giving it to the Lord and worshiping His majesty, His, His glory. This is how we fight our battles. We fight on our knees. We're praying. This is how we fight our battles, God. It's not mine. This is your battle. This, this is not our church. This is your church, God. It's not my finances. These are your finances, not mine. See, people that can't give, this is the issue. You think that money belongs to you. That money don't belong to you. That money belongs to God. Our mind, he's given us that mind. We're going to end with that song, but before we do, if you are under spiritual attack right now, I want you to run to the altar right now. Run, 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 run. We're not going to have room, but just run down here anyways. We're going to pray for you. And then the worship team is going to lead us in that song as we exit here in a moment. This is how I fight our battles. We're going to worship God. We're going to worship him as though the victory is already done because it is already done. Yes, come, come, come. Here's the second group. Here's the second group. Here's the second group. Everybody pay attention for another 30 seconds. We're done. If you're in this room tonight, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you were to die tonight, where are you going? If you were to die tonight, where are you going? Are you going to heaven? To pastor, I thought everybody goes to heaven. No, there's a heaven and there's a hell. All those who reject Jesus, they go to hell. All those who receive Jesus, they go to heaven. There's two locations we can go to when we die, heaven or hell. Where are you going when you die? Have you given Jesus your life? Have you surrendered to the Lord?
have you repented of your sins? Here it goes. I'm going to count to three. Saying, Pastor, I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven of all my sins. I want to make sure if I died today, I would go straight to heaven. Pastor, I need to get right with God. I'm not right with him. If I die tonight, I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to count to three. You say, Pastor, I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven. Man, I want to make sure if I die today, I'd go straight to heaven. Raise your hands when I count to three. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them. See all these hands up here. I see another hand over there. All these hands here. I see another hand over there. I see all these hands. I see three more hands. Three more hands over here. Another hand over here. So proud of you. All those that just raised your hands, you're still at your seat. I want you to come down. Make your way in the aisle. Just It's packed. Just get in the aisle. The Lord's going to touch you in that aisle right now. Why, why do I say get out in the aisle? Because we're making a public confession that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah, get out of your seats. There you go. Give them a round of applause. You guys are making your way down. And, and we had a lot of hands up here. All right. I'm going to say this prayer. Believe in the salvation. And then let's just, this is how I fight my battles. We're going to end on this song. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the crusade this Saturday. You guys, Franklin Graham. Billy Graham was one of the greatest evangelists we've seen. Billy Graham has passed away. His son has taken over. They're doing a God Love You tour across the United States throughout California. And a guy was praying. One of the guys told me, Pastor, I said, how did you get to San Bernardino? One of their intercessors was praying. And in the prayer time, he seen the map of California. Then he, he gets the map after he's praying. Lord, where do we go? He's all Southern California. He starts looking at Southern California. But Lord, where in Southern California? There's so many cities in California. He goes, go to San Bernardino. So this Saturday at 7 o'clock, Franklin Grant, the whole tour is going to end in San Bernardino. This is the last stop of the God Loves You tour. This Saturday at the Orange Show at 7 o'clock. We have some of our altar workers, some of our greeters. Um, we're there. All kinds of churches all over Southern California is getting involved in this. Newsboys is going to be there. If you've ever seen the Newsboys in concert, oh my God, they're one of the best. They're one of the best you'll ever see. Amazing. This Saturday, join it. Come on down. Come to the Orange Show. You guys got it? Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're at home right now. Join us in this prayer. And right after this song, the worship team is just going to sing. And when they're singing this song, you worship, worship, and we're dismissed. We're done. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Let's make this a holy moment right now. Let's become a disciple of Jesus. Let's become a child of God. Not everybody is a child of God. Only those who receive Christ is a child of God. You're not born a child of God. We come from the seed of Adam. We're born sinners. When we receive Christ, we're a child of God. Every head by every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Jesus, I surrender everything to you. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to forgive me of all of my sins I repent of all the wrong that I've done Jesus today I confess you as my Lord and Savior my faith is in you God today I am saved today I'm born again today I become a disciple of Jesus Christ Holy Spirit fill me in Jesus name Amen. We come against every attack. This is how we fight our battles. We're going to worship God. Let's worship God. We love you guys. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you. But let's worship God. Everything starts with starting at the way. Up in the front, starting at the way. God bless you guys.